Hello everybody. Today I have the Super Soko Wanderer and I'm going to go to uh, a place called Sakurabuchi Park and I'm going to go via a road which is called Orange Road. And Orange Road is the farmers grow mandarins, mandarins, mandarin oranges. And so this road is on a ridge line that goes through those trees, the fruit trees, and then that brings us out onto a, another road through the mountains that takes us to the Sakurabuchi Koen or park. So Sakura Buchi or Sakura is the cherry blossoms. So that park is famous for cherry blossom trees. So in April it looks fantastic. I'll put some actual photos of the park when it's in full bloom at the end of this video. But on the 2nd of January every year they have the biggest bike rally in Japan um, every year and there's people come from all over Japan on their bikes and the bikes vary from mopeds which are like the mods and rockers type mods bikes to the latest uh, super bikes to vintage bikes to the very first bikes ever made um, which are like bicycles with a little motor attached. Uh, the, everything is there, it's just brilliant. So I, I've been going every year, but I haven't been there in summer. So I thought I'd just have a quick look at that today. And the Super Soko is, is an excellent bike to go and see, what it, see the park. And the weather's good, so here I am. So just riding along here on the left we have the rice fields, so they're usually harvested oh, in another round October time, so there's still a bit of time left to go on them. But what I've found here in Japan is that the lower areas near the rivers and where you've got open ground tends to be rice fields. And then up on top of the mountains, you tend to have the tea plantations. So where my location is, it's tea plantation area. And where the Sakurabuchi Park is, it's rice area. a lot of bikes out today enjoying the weather everybody's having a good time I think if we continue along this road we will get to a place called Rio Gashido which is their caves limestone caves and they're great in summer because the temperature I think it's about 18 degrees or something like that and it's really nice but we're going to turn off before we get to there today. You notice the speed limits on these back roads are all 40 kilometres an hour. There's never any cars around. So people tend to go a little bit quicker than that. In the cities it's 30 kilometres an hour. A 
the bike's fully charged um, and I've already ridden a little bit just to get to the starting point this morning so I'm in mode 2 and it says I have 167 kilometres to go where we're going today is going to be nowhere near any of that range other guys pulling over for me thank you probably use mode 3 all day today but I don't know well I'll make an executive decision I'm going to choose mode 3 oh that's better <laughs> let me see how we go here so mode 3 tells me I've got 90 kilometers to go Keeping in mind the last 20 is useless, like 5 kilometers an hour type speed and the power is nothing, so it doesn't make it up hills. So it's really 70 kilometers to go. And that's based on the flat as well, this uh, range. So we're going up hills, but on the other side we're going down, so I guess it will even out in the end. But we'll find out anyhow. Okay, so I'm going to turn right here. And this takes us to the start of the Orange Road circuit. Although we don't, we're not on the really main part where all the farms are yet, but this... Uh, is the official start of the Orange Road. So these hills in front, this road cuts over the top of these hills and th th along the ridge line and then it joins the main Orange Road circuit. Now the Orange Road is very famous in this city for the bikes, bike riders. Um, quite a few people have been killed on that road. It is, well, narrow and you have just people that are just going a bit too quick on a corner and there's no runoff areas. So you go straight over a cliff or straight into a tree. But, you know, that's that person's decision. To, you know, if they want to go for a quick ride, that's the consequences if you're not on a racetrack. When I was younger, I used to race uh, superbikes, 1000cc superbikes, in Australia. And, uh, yeah, I, did, I had a B-grade licence, not an A-grade licence. Well, that was fun. I did that for a few years. It cost a lot of money. <laughs> but yeah, it's a good, a good experience. And then once you've re raced on a circuit, you sort of lose interest about going fast on a road because it's just not the same thing. We have some beautiful circuits here in Japan. There's uh, the Fuji uh, Raceway and uh, also uh, the Suzuka Circuit. And of course you probably know the Suzuka Circuit for the eight hour race. But those circuits you can actually go there and pay money and you can just ride your own road bike on, on those circuits. Um, so you can you know, have a good chance to experience a, a professional race circuit, international race circuit on your normal bike. It's a bit expensive though, it's like 200 euro 
for, I don't know, 200 euro for a couple of hours, I think. But that's all you need. While we're riding along this road, sometimes you can start to see some of the uh, trees uh, along here, the mandarin trees. Not in this patch though, it? <laughs> not, it's a bit overgrown. Let's have a look oh, up there, there they are. There's some here on our left hand side over here. There's, there's a little few of them, we'll get to a lot more soon. This is a nice road, it's uh, usually no cars, it's got nice sweeping bends, good views, it's great for a bike. I usually bring my Yamaha XSR along this road and go onto the Orange Road. Exactly the opposite pace today, not in the, the Super Soaker. There's a bike place called Mikawa Sangoku which is another road station so all these bikes that are passing us now and previously passed us they're all going there it's a meeting place on the weekend Saturdays and Sundays so I hope to finish there today you can see all the bikes there when we go into the parking area a couple of bike riders over there, they're going to do the circuit racing along this orange road here. So this is the official start of the main part of the orange road. So this is where the boy racers get out, girl racers, boy racers, and unleash the power of their beasts along here. I'm unleashing the power of the Super Soko. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> One thing is you don't have to do heavy braking around the corners because you're not going fast enough. <laughs> Halfway around here you get a very nice view of the, there's a big lake called Hamanako or Ham Hamana, Hamana Lake. Uh, you get a nice view of the lake from up the top here. So this is going along the ridge line at the moment. comes a boy racer, this is Kawasaki. Uh, 
I think this is a popular road because usually there's no cars and uh, basically the road's your own. They do have, uh, you know, hairpin corners. There's one up here, you can see here it's, there's a sign. It tells us that it's a fairly sharp corner. I'd call this a hairpin bend actually. But the thing is that um, when I first came to Japan, I nearly crashed my bike a few times. It's because, because the speed limit's 40 kilometers an hour everywhere, they don't put uh, suggested corner speed signs up. So usually it might have, you know, an arrow and 20 kilometers an hour or an arrow and, you know, 10 kilometers an hour if it's a hairpin bend, for example. But every, they're assuming everyone's going 40, so they don't bother with those signs. So you're on your super bike and you're, you're doing, I don't know, 60 or 70 and you come around a corner. So the question is, is it a sweeper or is it a hairpin? And uh, it's, it's caught me out a few times, well, a long time ago. Now I'm used to it, but um, yeah, it was a bit scary sometimes. I know this road not really well, but fairly well, so I sort of got an idea of what corners are uh, coming up, but I haven't been along here for a little while, so I'm just trying to jo it's just jogging my memory. In one of my videos previously I was talking about the Super Soko brakes and um, I was talking about the rear disc rotor. It's, I think it's like a 180mm and it's definitely too small for this bike because the uh, weight of the motor on the rear wheel, the centrifugal force, is greater than the braking power of the 180 millimeter brake so it really needs to be I, th I think at least a 240 millimeter so I've been shopping around and trying to find one and I did actually find one it's a kit you can get for the Wanderer and also for the TC Street Hunter or TS Street Hunter. Um, this is a nice view here. Here's the lake. I'll pan over with the camera later. And I did find one. Um, it comes with the caliper, the rotor. It's a whole kit uh, that it fits straight onto this. Unfortunately, it's about a thousand euro, which is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's a quarter of the price of the bike. So that's definitely out of the question so I'll still keep searching until I can find one but I definitely would like to upgrade that uh, as one of my next upgrades on the bike this place over here on the right is usually where you have you know, bike people pull over and they'll watch the racing bikes go up and down here. It's a bit early in the morning for that yet though.
like most places in Japan along here on the left hand side and right hand side is a lot of cherry blossom trees so this road is beautiful in springtime out on your bike I can see the attraction you know to come here and ride along this road because it is quite shady and the road condition is quite good there's no real bumps in the road um, and you know, no traffic so it's quite a nice run I think it's about five kilometers or eight kilometers so long I, I just can't remember exactly but it's quite good Just go at your own pace. I keep looking in my rear view mirror because usually the fast bikes will come up right behind you quick, so I want to pull over, let them go past. I don't want to slow them up. viewpoint Just have to be careful that bike riders they can't hear the Super Soco, so they, uh, I think what they hear is it sound the tire noise. They think it's like a fast bicycle or something going past them, and then they realise it's a bike. It's funny. So mostly this has been uphill here, so it's a drag on the battery. And um, it's going to be like that for a little while. It'll go flat again shortly and then uphill again. And then after that, it's pretty well flat. So these are the mandarin trees, you can see clearly they're in front there, so on the right. And just up here there's going to be a big field of them. The season for those is December, so in November and early December you can see you know, they're all fully ripe on the trees, some of them are just starting to fall off. You can just stop and pick them up off the ground. The farmers don't mind because they're already fallen onto the ground. So there's always plenty of mandarins, vitamin C in, in uh, winter time. Oh, yeah, in winter time. And you can see all the mountain over there, they're all uh, orange trees. These are all the mandarin trees here, too. Just cutting right through the middle. Then over in the distance, that's uh, Lake Hamana. There'll be another trip one day I'll do on the Wanderer. We'll go around the lake. It's really nice. So this is still part of the Orange Road. This is used less by the bike riders. A lot of them come from the highway back there and turn off that road up to here, uh, back there. But this is still called the Orange Road.
Today is going to be about 35 degrees. So I came out here a little bit earlier this morning to try to get away from the midday heat. It was nice and cool this morning when I first started. It's warming up a little bit now though. I'm looking forward to getting to the Sakurabuchi Park so I can just have a rest there. As you can see I've done this whole stretch, no people, no cars, nothing all this way. It's like my own private road the whole way, it's really nice. Yeah, the rivers here around this area are used for irrigation for the trees. So they have pumped, the farmers have the water pumps and pump the water from the river and water the trees that way. So the circo is telling me I've got 72 kilometres left. So ignoring the 20 kilometres that we talked about, so we've got 50, 52 kilometres to go before we reach that danger zone of low speed nightmare. So we just soon we'll just come into the end of the Orange Road and then we'll turn off go through some little village and then that will take us on the road that takes us to the Sakurabuchi Park. Okay, so this is the official end of the Orange Road. Just turn off here. And then shortly up here we'll just turn right and then we're going to cut across to those mountains over there on the right hand side. We're going to be going over the top of those mountains. What's this guy doing? Uh, he's probably thinking, did I leave my wallet at home? I don't know. These factories here in front of us, they make food, uh, smoked bacon and hams and things like that, so every time you go past here there's always that smell of food, so it's really bad if you haven't eaten anything. So that sign back there said Shinshiro, uh, and that's where we're heading. The place where the park is is actually Shinshiro. It's the name of the city of town. Town is a better word. It's not a city, it's a town. There's the mountains ahead, that's where we're just going to head up now. This road takes us zigzagging up there. And that'll take us over to the other side, which will be good. Well, I can't believe my luck, but still no cars at all in front of me. Uh, all the way along, you know, it's been probably really nice trip. This is called Heartbreak Ridge, the bike, local bike people call it this, I don't know why. I suppose if you're coming down the other way you've got a good chance of crashing so your bike gets broken so your heart's broken. <laughs> the Heartbreak Ridge, I, I have no idea. We may have a go with this. It's funny. So in the distance there you can see uh, like a, it looks like a bridge. It's a roadway. So we're going to be heading right for that area. And Sakurabuchi is not far from there. Let's see, I'll give it some acceleration to see if I can get through this green light. Oh yes, made it. Fantastic. Just excellent. 
on these hot days it's okay you know when you're riding you get the breeze from the bike the, but you know stopped at a set of traffic lights it's not really comfortable Well, well, you can actually see those mountains in the distance. Last time in my previous video on my Yamaha XSR, I went to a road station called Skude Road Station. And that's the mountains that I actually went over to get to that road station. Um, yeah, they're, they're, I don't know, 600 metres or 500 metres or something like that. But it, they're not really high, but it's enough to be 5 to 8 degrees cooler sometimes. But it's impossible for me to go to there on this bike. It's, there's, just, there's just no range, which is unfortunate, but that's the way it goes. So it's telling me 60 kilometers remaining. And which is in real terms 40 kilometers. And I think I've got about 40 kilometers, 45 maybe, to do the to go to the Sakurabuchi and then also to go to Mikawa Sangoku, the road station where the bikes are and then to get back to the starting place. So, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> Once I have a rest at Sakurabuchi, it's good for the batteries. So when uh, any type of battery is under constant discharge, each of the cells doesn't discharge equally so you get an imbalance. So even by giving the batteries a rest even for 30 minutes, it gives the batteries a chance to equalize their voltages. And uh, I have found that that does help with the range. You, get, you do get a bit more out of it after you give them a rest. So the timing will be perfect when we get there. It's quiet on the super soaker when you stop at lights, you can't, there's no engine, so you hear all the other cars and birds and things like that. It's funny. That glow just pass us on the ninja he would have uh, just gone to its good air road station he's probably just coming back from there now I find a lot of the riders here in summertime they they go out early they leave home at six in the morning and go for a ride for a few hours they get back maybe 10 o'clock back to their home in the morning before it gets too hot well the heat's not the issue here in Japan it's the humidity so today you have a temperature of 35, but the humidity is going to be 80%. So that's the killer here. I find that really hard to get used to. We're probably five kilometers away now, so not too bad. So here we are, this is the Sakurabuchi Park. So all of these trees on the left hand side here are all cherry blossom trees, so in springtime it looks sensational. I'm just going to go into this parking area. This is where all the bikes come in January. Yeah. 
I don't know where there's a shady spot to park. I think I'll park over here. It's good anyway. Underneath these cherry blossom trees. Okay, so we just finished our trip from the beginning to the Sakurabuchi Park. So I'm just going to uh, stop here and have a rest. Also let the battery charge equalise. Uh, the voltage is in the cells and uh, yeah, it should be right to go when we get back. Alright, we'll see you in a minute. So this is the main bridge at Sakurabuchi. Um, along here on the right, uh, light, right and left side of cherry blossom trees and then this bridge actually goes over the river and you get an excellent view of the other side with cherry blossoms as well it's a big river here there's a big drop down to the river it's really nice we just get across here at the moment just walking across here pan over here you can see very nice uh, rocks and you know, the river flowing we'll go over and have a look at the other side here so on the side of the bank over there they're all cherry blossoms as well and here's a good view of the river it's flowing under the bridge here and it's a beautiful place there's plenty of shady spots it's good to have lunch here under a tree sometimes and then the mountains in the distance is what I was talking about before over the other side and along about another 30 kilometres is that road station that I went to on the Yamaha. And so this is Sakurabuchi. We'll just do a quick walk around of the bike. This is in the vintage green. I think it looks really good. Styling looks good. It matches the colour, the retro colour. Headlights, little screen at the front, the handlebars. I think it looks quite smart. 